Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and today we're going to look at using a Netron RDM10 or any of the Netron nodes with the trigger ports, which we can link to them all below. Um, if JP could do that, I appreciate that. Um, but I know the RDM10, um, the EN12s, uh, some of the other models have trigger ports on the back. What do those look like? Okay, we're gonna use those. I'll show you that in a minute. We're gonna use those to trigger a simple Q via a switch. Now, why would you want to do this? Um, there's a couple really great reasons, okay? The first is um, alarm systems, okay? You can have an alarm system. Uh, they often have a trigger. I think they pretty much always have a trigger output uh, where they can send a little trigger uh, and break a switch, basically, um, or connect a switch um, in order to fire a Q, aka house lights to full, right? That's, that's one option. Um, another option is just, hey, you're in a smaller space. You're in a smaller church, you're in a restaurant, a club, something like this, and you just want to give them a switch so that when you're not there, when there's no operator there, somebody can maybe turn on the house lights to full, turn on the stage lights, etc. Now, there are a couple things we got to be careful of with those, and I'll run through that within today's tutorial. What are the trigger ports? If I grab my RDM10 here, which has got a bunch of stuff plugged into it, we have these green Phoenix connectors on the back. These are the trigger ports. Uh, they're, I think, technically like GPIO, which means basically that uh, the top one, which is numbered one through 10, sends out a little tiny bit of voltage, DC, I believe, doesn't really matter. Um, and at the bottom, it comes back in, okay? When those two wires connect, aka when a switch comes together, um, you're able to go ahead and fire a cue, okay? How cool is that? Turn that back off. All right. And so uh, the question then becomes, so then it's like, okay, you know, you could use this as a house lights thing, as a quick just stage lights on for cleaning or what have you, uh, in a space where you don't need a full-on architectural control system. You don't even need wall panels with multiple devices. You just need something simple that someone can press, okay? So first thing we did here was we found our RDM10 here in the Netron CLU software, and I just went to the Q options, so it pulls me into the web browser. Okay, so the Qs in the Netron, uh, the first thing you wanna do is you go to the Save Q page. You select a queue, and then whatever's coming through the node at the time when you hit save here, so this can be from Onyx, but again, these are Netron nodes, so you don't have to use Onyx. Um, any Ethernet, uh, anybody sending DMX over Artnet or SACN through this node uh, will go ahead and, and be saved when you press save. So right now I don't have that hooked up, but that's how that works. You just send it from your console, hit save, and then you're good to go. Okay, but where it gets interesting is the triggering options. So we'll go here to Q options. You can see here, you can name it. Um, yeah, you can name it there. Um, you can have a fade time, you can have a hold time. By default, that's one second, which for this example we're gonna use, because basically, as long as the switch is on, like so, um, it's going to hold. Then when you turn the switch off, it goes ahead and shuts off. There are some options to that. Okay, so let's just say here, I'm actually just gonna give it a two second fade, okay? Hit save, give it a test. That didn't work. <laughs> we'll have to check those settings. Anywho, um, it is weird that it didn't work. Doesn't matter. Um, for the sake of this example, it's an easy, cheap, low cost way to get some house light control whatever if it doesn't fade. Okay, so that sets up um, basically the cue, the fade, etc. cetera. You, you may not need to touch any of those, uh, but then we go to inputs, okay? And I'm on input one, just the, the number one input of the switches of the, uh, the triggers on the back. Event type, we wanna set that to Q, okay? I've set that to Q1. I've set it to toggle. So that means uh, if I had set that to trigger, which is the default initial, um, basically it would turn on, but then if I turn the switch off, it would just never turn off like this. 
And so um, toggle is important. Trigger source contact, though, again, you can have a DMX value trigger this, so you could have a little just simple fader-based DMX console. Um, you could have a Artnet or SACN trigger. That's a little more advanced than we're gonna get into at this moment. Then, very important, the uh, Q options tab is also going to help us out here. Okay, there's a few things in here that are really important when we talk about uh, the Q options and, and making this work the way that it's working right now. Okay, the first is uh, startup mode. I set that to send zeros. So that means when this device comes up, basically, I've actually got a uh, DMX tester plugged in. Nope, I lost it. Um, my DMX cat from City Theatrical. Love those things. Um, but basically, we wanted to send a zero value on startup. I just did that as a precaution, turn everything to zero. Um, and then signal loss, um, we set... Um, the timeout to zero seconds, and then loss mode is uh, we want to fade to zero and hit save. Okay, and what that does basically is um, previously in the default settings, if I flip this on and then flip it off, um, it just disables DMX output with, with those default settings. Okay, um, and that's a little bit problematic because if your fixture is set to hold DMX, uh, basically hold their value whenever they lose DMX, and a lot of fixtures out of the box are set up this way, some you can't change, um, then it would never turn off. In fact, right now, um, I clearly did something wrong because, <laughs> um, because it is stuck. Oh, no, it was doing a 30-second fade. Okay, so really, I want, let's just set the fade out to two seconds, save. Um, so you want to have uh, the fade to zero on uh, send zero here um, instead of disable DMX. And let's just test it um, because that way on, off. There it is. Nice. And we get a little nice fade on the out. Um, we should in theory be able to in the Q options I'm not sure why it's not respecting this fade time on the switch. Um, is it in the inputs? No. Um, maybe it's because we're using toggle instead of trigger. Um, regardless, if you're in a place, a venue, and you're like, hey, we've got this Netron node, we're running through it anyways, we want to just wire up a switch, see here's how I did it, I used a regular switch, I don't know if that's up to electrical code or not, but you could get just a simple toggle on off little switch. Um, and and then I just hooked up the two wires to it. I used red and black, put those into the in and out uh, of the trigger port one, and then boom, done. Um, and then it, it's going to work. You can go, see, lights on, lights off, done. See, it's that simple. So a lot of cool settings in here, uh, some definitely some cool stuff that you can customize, but ultimately if you're in one of those places where you just got a small venue and you're like, hey, we don't need a fancy button panel, we don't need something with multiple options, we just want somebody to be able to hit the switch, this could be a good way to go. Now, the biggest caveat with the Netron Q system is that when a Q is triggered in the Netron node, everything coming out of that node is now overtaken by that queue. That queue has the highest priority. It's over your console, it's over everything else. And I don't believe, unless they've changed something, I don't believe, oh, it was system device settings. We were not in queue settings, we were in device settings. That's this screen. Um, but I, I don't believe there's a way to set a priority to the console over the switch, okay? Um, and so, and so that's going to be uh, really important just to know that, okay, if that switch gets hit, it takes over, even if you're using a console to control things. So physically, you have to be careful about where the placement of this item is. Um, it may not be perfect for house lights for you, but if you just want something, it, it depends on your situation, honestly. Um, but, you know, if you can place it, you know, right behind the lighting operator, you know, in a place that's not super publicly accessible, you know, then that would probably be okay because nobody's going to come up in the middle of a service, in the middle of a show, whatever, and flip that. And even if they did, you just go like, and smack it off and go, hey, 
don't do that. <laughs> but anywho, um, hope you enjoyed seeing this cool option, just a different way to be able to control lights, to be able to get house light control without getting fancy or expensive. If you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe. Uh, we need those subscribers to grow. And if you need any Onyx gear or any lights, uh, head over to learnstagelightinggear.com. We are your source. We're your trusted dealer. We're here to teach you. We're here to help you and help you get the right thing. And we're authorized dealers for so many brands. And we would love to be the place you get your lights and gear. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.